Are we ready? All right. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, so I'm Eli Oldenick, 84. And uh, I, was, uh, I was very, very honored when uh, Mrs. D uh, asked me to come and, and talk about some of my engineering research. Uh, it's been so impressive to me to see what the uh, records that came after us have done. Um, so it's a little bit humbling, actually, to come uh, talk to this crowd. So I was trying to think, do I want to talk about uh, some of the stuff I'm just starting to get into about integrating renewable resources into the, into the power grid? Or you know, I do a lot of work on uh, vehicle routing and logistics kind of networks. And I, most of my research has been focused on design uh, algorithms for design and operation of uh, telecommunications networks. And then uh, I looked at some of the other titles <laughs> for the session, and I thought, well, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't get to blow anything up, and I don't make wine, um, but I do uh, get to spend a lot of time uh, doing fun things with networks um, that are a little bit more abstract. So, for example, networks that relate to the NBA standings. And so I need to spend just one minute just talking about network engineering uh, to set this up. So this is a typical example of kind of a network analysis question that a uh, telecom engineer might be interested in. So we have a network with an organization that's got uh, facilities in seven cities in the US. And the numbers on the links, those are bandwidth units. Doesn't really matter what they are, just sort of relative. They could be gigabits per second. And so this is how the network was set up. And they may be interested in, well, what happens if there's a big spike in traffic uh, between, uh, let's say, Boston and LA? How much traffic? Uh, can be supported between those, those two sites. So if we look at uh, LA, for example, you can see it's, it's constrained to you know, only be able to send or transmit uh, 11, you know, 11 units at any one time because of the, the two links connecting <laughs> it. And Boston's uh, a little further constrained. Right? It can only send or receive nine units uh, at any one particular time. But it turns out that the bottleneck is actually in here. Right? So any traffic that's going between LA and Boston has to traverse uh, at least one of those two links. And so that the, the total capacity there is, is only seven bandwidth units. So uh, in, in network uh, theory, we call those uh, two, two uh, links, we call that a, a cut. Um, and it turns out this is the minimum cut between LA and Boston. And it has a capacity of seven units, and so that's what's uh, constraining the maximum amount of traffic or the maximum amount of flow we can transmit between Boston and uh, LA. Uh, and the reason it's called a cut is pretty obvious. If we were to, say, remove those two links, um, that would completely separate the network into two parts that can't have um, any communication with each other. So um, obviously, in network design, uh, looking at cuts in physical networks is, is very important. Often, it's part of the design criteria. Um, but I uh, want to talk about uh, minimum cuts and other uh, related topics in, in a uh, maybe a more fun uh, application. Uh, and so that has to do with sports standings. And so this is an example. You can see it's a little bit old. Um, and um, the question here is we're looking at the, this is the, what used to be the National League West in baseball. And uh, you can see the Giants, uh, who I was rooting for at that time because I lived in the Bay Area. Uh, they were in last place. Uh, very far behind the top two teams. Uh, but it, would it be possible for them to somehow move all the way up to first place? Right? Or is their season essentially over? So that's the, that's the question. So winning the pennant means, means finishing in first place in the division. And the traditional way of doing this is very, very simple math. Uh, you just sort of look at how many games does the team have left. So in this case, it's 22. And how many games have they won so far? 59. So if they went on a miracle winning streak, uh, they'd win a total of 81 games for the season. The top two teams so far have only won 78. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's remotely possible that, uh, that the Giants could catch up. Um, so let me just quick quiz. Anybody recognize this fellow? Oh, Yogi Berra. OK, great. So Yogi is famous for uh, many uh, pearls of wisdom, particularly this one. It ain't over till it's over. And so that's sort of the thinking here, right? Um, he's also said things like, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. 
and uh, <laughs> nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. All right, so the thing is, um, what Yogi was saying there is not including all the information that you could use to uh, answer that question. So if we look at the schedule of games that are left uh, to play, we would have seen that the top two teams, the Dodgers and Padres, had a seven game series left. And in baseball, uh, there are no ties. So that means of those seven games, uh, at least you know, one of those teams was gonna end up uh, with, with uh, you know, winning four of them and um, winning at least four of them and, and finishing with a record of at least 82 wins. So just because of that series between uh, the Dodgers and Padres, um, there's no possible way that the Giants could finish in first place. So even if they, they were to win all 22 of those games, we know there's at least one team in here that would, would have a, uh, 82 wins at least. And so it turned out that the Giants were actually eliminated. And um, so I figured this out. And um, the San Francisco Chronicle did not figure it out for two more days. <laughs> and then they ran this sad story about after last night's loss, the Giants are eliminated and what a terrible season we had and so forth. I did write a letter to the editor. <laughs> I did write a letter to the editor, um, and um, they, I don't know what they did with it. But they didn't answer it. Um, so, um, uh, and then uh, th th these examples can get, can get very complicated. So this is the same sort of setup, uh, only now we've got five teams in this division, and you can see it's the same kind of thing, right? Detroit. Um, is way, way back there, but it's, it's, it seems like it's remotely possible because uh, they still have 27 games left to play. So if they win those 27 games uh, plus the 49 they already have, that would give them 76. And so maybe you know, a miracle could, could occur and they'd, they'd finish in first place. So here, um, analysis gets much more complicated. Um, because it, 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 to show that, in fact, Detroit had been eliminated there, and again, was not reported in the sports pages, um, you had to look at several different series. So these are uh, all the games between all the other teams in that division, and the way that uh, you can show uh, whether or not Detroit is, is, is eliminated is to try to just, you know, sort of play God and, and, and assign wins and losses from these games in a way that um, first of all, we'll assume Detroit will win all their games, and then try to manipulate the wins and losses for these other teams so that none of them finish with uh, 76 wins. Right? And so if I can do that, it means Detroit still possibly has a chance. If I can't, then it means um, they're, they're eliminated. So the goal is to try to uh, create a scenario like that. And since we don't have a lot of time, I won't go through the whole uh, proof. Um, but it turns out, you know, if you, you start with a first place team uh, and you see, well, if they win two more games, that'll give them 77 wins. And uh, Detroit can only get to 76, so we don't want that scenario. Uh, well, what if they lose all of their games? Uh, then it turns out, you know, they have an eight game series with Boston. And so that would give Boston enough wins to be above 76, uh, and so on and so forth. And it turns out, you go all the way through this you know, logic tree uh, involving all of those teams, and it turns out Detroit uh, had no way of, of winning there. So um, the really cool thing about this is it turns out that you don't have to go through all of that enumeration to make that determination. And uh, the most the efficient way to do that calculation is set it up uh, like a network and um, do the kind of analysis that I was talking about earlier uh, and look at you know, how much flow can we send from this S node to the, to the node T over there. And here, uh, one unit of flow is gonna represent a win. So it's not, it's not a bit, it's not a car moving through a, through a, through a traffic network. Um, it's a win. And uh, this first layer here, I've got all of the different series of games between other teams in the division. <laughs> And the capacity on the, on the arc is how many games are left in that series. And then um, we've got a middle layer that goes to the nodes for each individual team. And so what's gonna happen here in uh, what we call a feasible flow is 
these two wins, uh, they'll get distributed. Maybe they both go to Baltimore, maybe they both go to Boston, maybe they get split one and one. Um, but it has to be one of those combinations. And then we put some capacities uh, on the other end. Uh, so the flow that comes in, it's going to balance the flow that comes out. And we want to create a scenario where none of the other teams end up with 76 wins. So I'm going to put an upper limit on the capacity there. So whatever uh, way I distribute the wins and losses here, I got to make sure that New York ends up with at most one of those wins. And, and I do the same, <coughs> same calculation with each of the other teams. So let's take you know, 76 minus the number of games they have left and uh, put, a, put a limit on that. And then it turns out here that there's a minimum cut right there that has a capacity of 26. All right, so that means there's no possible way to distribute all 27 units of flow here to make this balance out. So that, that shows that Detroit's been, been uh, mathematically eliminated, um, as they say, from first place in the division. So um, this result actually you know, was not new. Um, so I was learning about it in class. It turns out this was presented at a conference the year I was born. So this is kind of ancient, very ancient mathematics. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it was kind of a celebrated example in a, in a new textbook that was just coming out. Um, and so the instructor was, you know, showing it. And then I came up to him after class and I said, well, you know, there's actually, uh, this is all very out of date now because they've completely changed the uh, way that the playoffs work <laughs> in baseball. So they added a whole, they added a lot, uh, you know, more teams and um, they changed the, changed the playoff structure. So we came up with uh, ways of I extending that model to uh, address the new playoff structure and then also answer some uh, more quantitative questions. So the network model that I showed you before with the, with the, uh, with the min cut, that's a yes, no question. Is the team eliminated from first place or not? Um, but it turns out with just, you know, with a few extra changes, um, we can then address a question of, well, if they aren't eliminated, how many more games do they need to win to make sure that they don't get eliminated? So we set up a website, and I've been doing this for a long time, tracking uh, that number. So how many games do they need to avoid being eliminated from first place? And then, as I said, they changed the, they changed the whole divisional structure, and they started adding what are called wildcard teams. So uh, that means that uh, in baseball now, it's possible a team could come in tied for third place in its division and still end up in the playoffs. So um, that brought up some really more interesting models uh, to try to calculate that. So whether or not a team has been eliminated from the postseason, and if they haven't, how many more games do they need to win to avoid that? Um, and then there's the other way to look at it, which is to say, how many games does the team have to win to ensure that it's absolutely clinched, let's say, first place? So for example, here it's showing uh, Cleveland, if they win three more games, they're, they've locked up first place in their division and nobody else can, can pass them. Um, and I do the same thing for, um, for the postseason. Um, and so uh, that's been a lot of fun. And uh, recently, uh, I've started doing that for the, for the NBA. And uh, their season hasn't started yet. It's going to start next week. So at this point, uh, the title of my talk might seem a little misleading because the network analysis really doesn't show us anything that interesting at this point. Uh, all the teams uh, are in the same position. They need to win at least 68 games uh, to win a playoff game. Um, but as the season uh, starts, this will we'll start solving these models and updating these results, and you'll start seeing these things, seeing these things change. Um, so I just wanted to plug the site. You can follow it on, on Twitter. And uh, I know I'm standing between you and learning about the money world, so I think I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, great. Any questions? Yes. So is it, even with all the tiebreakers of head-to-head -head and whatever, is it, is it still a graph problem? Okay, that's, that's a great question. So it, it, it actually, the core is a graph problem, but then it turns into um, an, an integer program so that it's not a pure graph model anymore. 
So then it make, turns it, it turns it into something that's a, a NP-hard optimization problem, and so the, the algorithmic process for solving it gets gets a lot more complicated. But it's still possible to mo to model all those things as sort of extra extra restrictions on the flow through the graph. Yeah. So uh, we have a saying at work uh, that the, the man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know in math they will often then take that a step further and prove that this hammer is the best thing with which to hit that mm -hmm. nail. <laughs> um, uh, much better than my shoe or something. Is there a proof, or uh, did, did that original demonstration include a proof that this network form was the best way to solve these kinds of problems? Or is it, at what point is a crossover between just oh. brute forcing it? Um, actually, yes, yeah, so that, um, there is a proof for that. And in fact, there's a, that's kind of spurred a literature uh, on how to solve that problem efficiently. Um, and then it, it, you know, there are other applications of, of solving that. So yeah, it's, it, it, uh, is It's up, well, okay, I can say up to a certain point. Then when we start taking in a lot of these tiebreakers, especially the way the, the NBA does it, um, then it's a, then we get into it's an NP hard problem. So we don't really know, actually no one knows what the most efficient way is to solve it. So you know, I, would, I would argue that the way I'm doing it is practically uh, the most, most efficient, but that's, that's not necessarily true. So. And do you have time for one more? Well, this segues into the money question. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was saying, there are people who will bet on anything, right? Yes. Even things which you know yeah. are not mathematically possible. Have you exploited this? For <laughs> 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 optimized value. Yeah. Or it all. all right. Yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah. That's that's a great question. Um, so far, no, because um, all I've been able to catch are uh, teams being eliminated early, and I don't know that you can make a bet that a team won't make the playoffs. Or if you can, the odds are you'd have to put down so much money just to make a little back that it might not be worth it. If I can ever catch a point where I see a clinch before one of the other teams, then yeah, then I could, could go to town with that. Um, <laughs> there, is, there, there is actually a use case for this, um, and I've done a little bit of consulting with, with Major League Baseball. Um, you know, they're interested in tracking, you know, exactly when a team's going to clinch so they can start selling merchandise early and uh, promote games and so forth. So that, that's, you know, not, not as, as exciting, but it does, could be a potential money maker. You need the house, right? Yes. You can take 100 to 1 bets. Right, on exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you all for your attention. I'll turn it over to Steve.